Let me invite you to take your Bibles and turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. Do what now? It's off. Yeah, that one's off. Feedback. Barry said it's complicated. All right. Again, turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let's look at verse 10 as our text verse. 1 Corinthians 15, 10. Notice what the Scripture says. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. By the grace of God, I am what I am. And His grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, listen, but the grace of God, which was with me. Father, thank you for your word. Help us look at it and learn from it. In Jesus' name, amen. I have titled this message, Because of the Grace of God, I Am. Because of the Grace of God, I Am. You know, in way of introducing the message of the hour to you, uh, the word grace is a marvelous word. In fact, this is one of those special words that belongs to the child of God. It's our word. It is a word that God has given to us. And it's a wonderful word. Now, God has given us some other words that the world just doesn't know how to uh, properly appreciate. For instance, there's words like glory. <laughs> Uh, glory. Well, glory. That's a good word. Amen. amen. A good word. And then there's words like amen. I've often said if you want to preach a old Baptist preacher to death, just say amen a time or two and he'll just keep on preaching. <laughs> amen. Yes, That's a good word. And then there's words like hallelujah. That's a good word. And then there's words like faith. Faith is a good word. But if we were to begin to try to define the word grace, the word grace is basically defined in a dictionary as being unmerited help given to people by God. Now, if you want me to explain to you what that word unmerited means, it just simply means you didn't do anything to deserve it, okay? If you got what you really deserved, you wouldn't have gotten God's grace. But you know, I, I begin to think about grace, and grace to me is much more than that. Now, listen to this. I want to give you another definition for grace. Grace is the merciful kindness by which God exerted, He exerted His holy influence upon our souls. And He turns them to Christ and He keeps, listen, He keeps, He strengthens, and He increases us in Christian faith, knowledge, affection, and kindness as we exercise our Christian virtues. That's grace. That's what grace is really all about. In this particular verse of Scripture, Paul says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Now basically, if you begin to read what Paul is trying to share with uh, 
the Corinthian church, the church of Corinth at this particular time, he's preaching to them, if you read this particular chapter, he's preaching to them about the resurrection of the dead. And for some reason, there were those who were struggling with resurrection from the dead. Well, I don't struggle with that. Amen. Amen. I don't have any problem with that. Because he lives, I too shall live. Up from the grave, he arose with a triumph over his foes. Up from the grave, he arose. He's alive. And thank God for the resurrection. In fact, Paul mentions the fact that the resurrected Christ was seen by, well, most Bible scholars say over 12,500 witnesses. But now, you know, I, I don't know. I do know that he appeared before many witnesses after he had been resurrected from the dead. His earthly brother, James, and, uh, and then, of course, Paul, uh, they, they saw the resurrected, resurrected Lord. Paul proceeds to tell his readers in this particular chapter that because of his sins and his attacks against the church, that he is the least of the disciples. He is the least of all the apostles. I, I, I think that he, he lets us know that. Well, uh, I'm the chief among sinners with him. I'm the least in need of a Savior. And so... He tries to instill into them the precious grace of God. Now I want to remind each of you this evening that the same is true for you and me. Because of our sinfulness, we deserve to die and stay dead. Okay? We deserve to die and to stay dead. But God so loved the world... <laughs> You could take the word world out there and write your name in right there. I believe that with all my heart. For God so loved you that He gave His one and only Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now because of our sinfulness, we deserve no more than hell itself apart from the presence of the Almighty. But thank God for His grace. Uh, because His grace was revealed to us in the person of His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, we can be saved and used by God in a wonderful fashion. I don't know about you, but ain't you great? Ain't it great to be saved? Ain't you glad you're saved? Now, I know I shouldn't say ain't, but it, I mean, it makes for good preaching, okay? I guess I could have said, aren't you glad that you're saved? But ain't you glad that you're saved? Man, I'm glad that I'm saved. I'm glad that God shed His life's blood through Jesus Christ our Lord on the cross of Calvary so that I could experience grace. Now this evening I want to, to, to help just a little bit with the help of the Lord. I want to help you to see uh, just some of the possessions that belong to you and I because of grace. You and I, like Paul, we can say, I am what I am by the grace of God. And He's still working on me. Now, I know some of you are looking real spiritual right now like you've already made it. But He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be, I hadn't arrived just yet. I still live in this body of flesh. And this body of flesh sometimes can find itself getting just a little bit out of the way and I have to repent. You see, there are sins of commission, but there are sins of omission as well. Those things that we omit to do is still just as much sin as those sins that we do know what we're doing. And so I still have to repent. And I, one of the prayers that I pray every day is, God, I know that I failed you in some way today, so Lord, forgive me for failing you. Sins of omission. And I'm grateful tonight, this evening, 
for the grace of God. So in the next few moments, I want to share with you some of the things that we need to consider together that, you know, by the grace of God, as Paul said, I am what I am. Number one, I am what I am because I've been saved by grace. I am what I am because I've been saved by grace. I wasn't saved because I was pretty to look at. I wasn't saved because uh, I had plenty of money. I wasn't saved because of the family that I was born into, and I thank God for my family. I mean, I thought we'd come from a pretty good bunch. I mean, I come from the Rays on my daddy's side and the Shifflets on my mama's side. And, you know, they're some pretty good Rays and they're some pretty good Shifflets, but they're some of them that are not so good either. Y'all hear Ed say amen. <laughs> so I, I come from some pretty good folks, but I'm not saved because I come from good people. Now, I'm thankful for my good folks because my mom and daddy taught me the importance of serving God. And they instill that into me and instill that into my life. And I'm probably what I am today because I had a praying mama and a praying daddy that helped to pray for me and to get me through uh, rough times in my life. But hey, I'm not saved because of that. I'm saved by grace. In fact, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 8, it says, for by grace are you saved. It don't tell you that you're saved because of who you are. It says, for by grace are you saved. And then it tells us how. By grace are you saved through faith. Now that word faith simply means that you chose to believe after God began to draw you by His grace. So you're saved by grace through faith. And then it goes on to say, and not of yourselves. I want to remind you, and you know, sometimes we have to be reminded. Sometimes we think that we can do enough to be saved. You can't do enough to be saved. We don't do to be saved. We do because we are saved. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of anything of yourself. It is a gift of God. Now in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 it says we have redemption. We have redemption through His blood. You know there's a lot of people trying to leave the blood out now. But you can't leave it out. It was His shed blood that made atonement for my sins. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Somebody said, how can red blood cleanse sin? Well, there's a difference in my red blood and, your, and His red blood. You see, my red blood had sin in it from the beginning. But He has didn't. He's got pure red blood. And His pure red blood was shed on the cross of Calvary to save me from my sin. And I have redemption through His blood. Listen, the Bible says the forgiveness of sins according, listen, according to the riches of His, here it is again, grace. According to the riches of His grace. So number one, I'm saved. I am what I am because I'm saved by grace. Number two, I am assured or sure by grace. I am sure of my salvation. In Romans chapter 5, verse 2, the Bible says, By whom also we have access by faith into His grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in, listen, in hope of the glory of God. Let me tell you something. We wouldn't have any assurance whatsoever were it not for the grace of God. But we can be sure of our salvation, my friend, because we have access by faith into His grace. Without faith, we didn't have access into that grace. We had to believe that He is and that He is a rewarder to them who diligently seek Him. So I'm saved by grace, 
but I'm sure by grace. The third thing that I want to bring to your attention, I am what I am because I am secure by grace. And I have to be real careful whenever I reach this particular point in the message. Simply because a lot of people think that being sure by grace gives us a license to live our lives like we want to. No. And a thousand times no. John said, My little children, I would that you sin not. But if we do sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. But hey, God doesn't want us to sin. God wants us to live above our sin. And we can, we can do that if we live in Christ. We can't do that living outside of Christ. Listen, in Romans chapter 3, verse number 24, listen to what the, the Bible says. It says, be justified. That's another good word. You know what that word justified means? It means that you can stand before God just as though you had never sinned. You see, when God saves you by His marvelous grace, you are justified. And you can stand in the presence of the living God just as though you'd never sinned. Being justified freely, freely by His grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. There's that word again. We're justified. How? By His grace. Without His grace, there's no justification. But because of His justification and we being justified freely by His grace, we are secure by grace. We have our security in the grace of God. And to say that we're not eternally secure in the, in the grace of Almighty God is to say that His grace is not enough. But praise God, it is enough. It is enough. And for the life of me, I cannot understand why somebody would think that His grace is not enough. And that you could lose something that He's done. He didn't make a mistake when He saved you. Amen? Amen? No, He didn't. And so, you're secure by grace. And then number four, I'm also strengthened. I am what I am and I'm strengthened by His grace. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, verse 9, listen to what the Bible says. And He said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. When we are at our weakest, it's then that God can be His strongest because when we find ourselves at our weakest, it's then that we need God more than anything else. Amen? It's then that we need God. Hey, there are times that we think that we're strong and that we don't need Him, but when we're weak and we need Him, we cry out to Him, then our strength is perfected in our weakness. Our strength then is coming from Him and is perfected in Him. Listen to what Paul said. He said, most gladly, Therefore, I would rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest on me. Thank God that we're strengthened by His marvelous and His wonderful grace. And he goes on to say, and God is able to make all grace abound in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. God is able to make all grace abound toward you that ye always having sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Listen, depending upon the grace of God, we can abound in every good work. And we can get much accomplished for the glory of God. I am what I am by the grace of God. And then number five, 
I am supplied by grace. I am supplied by grace. Hebrews 4.16. Listen to what it says. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy and find grace. And find grace to help in time of need. So I am supplied with what I need by the grace of God. What I need to live and what I need to help somebody else. You see, when God saved you, He saved you to make a difference in somebody else's life. I don't know why sometimes we get the attitude that because we're saved, we don't have anything to worry about. Well, God doesn't really want us to worry, but I, I don't know why we think that we don't have anything to do. God wants us to reach into the lives of others. Hey, if somebody hadn't reached into your life, where would you be? Aren't you glad that somebody cared enough to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with you? You'd be lost and without God. So, so God supplies what we need to, to help somebody in their time of need. And then number six, I'm somebody. Y'all know that? There's a lot of times that people may call me a nobody. And in the eyes of some people, I may be a nobody, but in the eyes of God, I'm a somebody. Look at your neighbor out there and say, you know I'm a somebody. <laughs> I'm a somebody. By grace. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 7 and 8. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of God's power unto me who am less than the least of all saints. Is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ? Don't ever let somebody tell you you're a nobody. Just always look at them when they tell you that you're a nobody. Say, oh, oh no, oh, oh, you got that wrong. I'm a somebody. And I am a somebody in Christ Jesus, my Lord. Then number seven, I'm satisfied by grace. I am satisfied by grace. You know, I can't remember what group it was, but they made a very popular song back whenever I was a boy growing up. It was either I can't find no satisfaction or I can't get no satisfaction. It. Might have been the Rolling Stones. I don't remember who it was, but I think it was. What a name for a group, Rolling Rocks. <laughs> I can't get no satisfaction. Well, I want you to know you can get some satisfaction. Did you hear me? I am satisfied by grace. Listen to what he says here in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 7. He said that in the ages to come, that he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. You know why some people can't be satisfied? It's because they're looking for everything except Christ Jesus. But when you find Christ Jesus or Christ Jesus finds you and He draws you and He saves you by His marvelous grace, He brings satisfaction into your life. He really does. All of these things is ours and the gifts that God has given us by grace. Number eight. And we could probably go on and on and on with a sermon like this, like the song we were singing just a few minutes ago. There's so many more things that we could say about grace. I'm also surprised by grace. I am surprised by grace. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 8 through 10. The last of all, he has seen of me also as of one born out of time, for I am the least of the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. That's what Paul said. 
By the grace of God, I am what I am, and His grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored much more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was in me. Now, if you go back in your scriptures and you begin to study the life of one man by the name of Saul of Tarsus, you'll find that he was a, he was a soldier who wanted to persecute the saints of the living God. There is no telling how many saints of the living God that Paul even killed for their faith. But don't you imagine that Paul was surprised whenever God slapped him off that horse? I guess I ought not to use that term slapped. But that's just about what happened. God just knocked him off of that horse. And he cried out, Who are you? Lord. And Jesus answered, I am Jesus. Don't you guess that he was probably surprised? Listen, I was a shy, shy, shy boy growing up. I was shy. You couldn't get me to stand up in front of a classroom. That's why my teachers wondered if I'd ever make it through school. Whenever we'd have to do reports, I wouldn't do one because I was afraid that I had to stand up and vocally give my report to a classroom and they'd laugh at me and make fun of me. And now I stand up and give reports every week and you laugh and you make fun of me, but I'm having the time of my life. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. I was a shy boy. First sermon I ever preached in my life. I had 12 pages of notes and the sermon lasted probably five minutes. I was afraid. I was, I was scared. But for God to reach down and save me and choose me and make me a preacher of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I know right now some of you are wondering, well, I don't know why you can't preach some of them five-minute sermons here now. Man, I can't get the message across in 30 minutes. What are you talking about? Man, the grace of God will surprise you. I remember when God called me, I said, Lord, you need to take a second look. You know, God, that I'm shy, that, that I can't stand before people. And the Holy Spirit of God said, you can't, but I can. And for 35 years now, God has let me do this. And I've had the time of my life. And I hope He ain't through with me yet. I hope he continues to let me do this for a long time yet to come. Somebody asked me one time, said, Preacher, what in the world would you do if you didn't have somewhere to preach? I said, man, there's a lot of squirrels and birds out there. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'd be like Junior Hill. I'd look at that old blue tick hound and say, I wonder if that dog saved. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Man, Paul was surprised that Jesus would choose him after he persecuted the church the way that he did, but God used him. Listen to me. Many things in life will fail us. Friendships will blossom and sometimes they'll die. I think of some of the things that's happened to me in some of the churches that I've pastored over my life. I had a rough time when I left Springhead Baptist Church. I really did. And I won't get into what happened as to the reason to why I left Springhead Baptist Church because I don't need to. I've had some rough things to happen in some other churches that I've pastored. I've had some people that I call friends that I felt like pretty much spit in, spit in my face. Now, they didn't literally do it, but I felt that way. So friendships will blossom 
and die. It's wonderful to be healthy, but health sometimes can leave you. Riches and wealth will often remain just beyond the reach of your fingertips. And you wonder why somebody that's living ungodly has all that they want and you're just struggling to live. You ever been there? Come on. You ever been there? But there's one thing that every child of God possesses that won't ever fail them, that won't never end, that won't never run out, that won't never run dry, that won't never be found to be insufficient. And that's the grace of the living God. Praise Hallelujah. God. <laughs> His grace will always abound. Yes, the road can be long and dreary. The days can be filled with difficulties and struggles, but be assured that there will be grace that will be sufficient for everything that you'll ever need, for every trial that you'll ever face, for every circumstance that you'll ever go through. God's grace will be sufficient. Church, you know how I know it. Because, bless God, I've lived it. And He's never, ever forsaken me. And He never will. Because that's the promise of God. And that's the hope that we have. Being the saints of God. I am what I am by the grace of God. And you are what you are by the grace of God. Stand with me. Father, thank You for Your Word. Use it now for Your glory. In Jesus' name, Amen.